Okay, so color pencils. Fundamentally, color pencils. Wax-based medium. Uh, the primary color pencil that I usually go with because it's really readily available is the Prismacolor pencils. And I go with the Premier because the Premier is a better pencil than the Scholar, which is also Prismacolor, but it's more of a student grade. So this one blends better. Um, I believe it's just got more pigment, perhaps, and it's just better quality. So you get better results. Okay, so what I did here is I wanted to show you guys what I've spoken about in class before. And that is, is that you mix primary colors with secondary colors and they will nullify each other out to create a neutral or a dark shade. So if you want to get orange and you want to shade it versus using black, go and get on the opposite color of the uh, opposite side of the color wheel and get a blue. And where you go and you add blue to the orange, you're going to tone it down. Same thing, vice versa. You want to tone down the blue, you add orange, which seems crazy. Logically, how do I add a light color to a dark color and get the dark color to go darker? And it's the same thing with the red and the green and the violet and uh, the yellow, the gold. Okay, so the quick way for me to remember these is, I think, Christmas, um, Denver Broncos, LA Lakers. That's how I remember when I'm doing my color pencils. Well, I used to anyway. I remember it now. So what I like to do with this is I always like to do an eyeball exercise. And if you've ever had me in a class before, you know what I'm talking about. We would get these eyeballs and we would cut them out and we would plaster them all around school. And it was fun because you'd see eyeballs popping up all over the place. So um, I like green eyes for my projects. So I'm gonna go with, what kind of green is this? Grass green is what they call it here. And I always like to tease when I first learned about colored pencils because I always thought of colored pencils as adult crayons because adults really want that 64 pack. I know I did with the little sharpener in the side, Crayola made. But the thing about it is that we don't want anybody to think that we're not sophisticated and intelligent. And so we would always shy away from doing that because we don't want anybody to think we're infantile. So what ends up happening is we come up with a way to make it look more sophisticated in the form of an encapsulated piece of uh, crayon in a wooden pencil so nobody can see. We can disguise it. <laughs> okay. So when I was told, to, when I was uh, teaching at a college and we were doing preliminary drawings, they told me do it with if you could please do it with uh, color pencils to do your preliminary work rather than paint, like watercolor, like I was used to using, please do it with color pencils because we don't want water to be f spilling in the computer labs. We need to double them up and we don't want water in there. So I said, okay, color pencils, huh? And I'd never used color pencils before and I found this really wonderful DVD I was at an art store in Southern California where you can actually rent these DVDs at the time. And uh, I rented this one on colored pencils. And, oh, that's not good. The colored pencils, you know, I was associated with coloring within the lines and crayons, et cetera. And what ended up happening with that is I realized through this video that that's not the case that you can bear down on pencils like these and you can get it to look like a painting. Okay, so I'm working on a regular kind of a drawing paper right now. I'm not working on what I normally work on with color pencils is, um, what do I usually use? Bristol paper, okay? So what you can see right now, the difference between color pencils like I thought they would be used and versus the way that they are used as an, op an alternative, an option, is you lay down your color and you mix it on the paper versus mixing it in a palette like you would with paint, okay? Okay. 
So there's the shade. Remember, shade is any color with the addition of black. And then I can go and get this grass green, and I can blend and pick up the black with small circles, and I can tone it to be a darker green than it would be. And I'm going and bearing down on this so that it becomes painterly. And you can feel it because of the quality of the premium version of Prismacolor. You can feel it start to glide and slip across the surface when you go over the waxy area that you've already indicated. Okay, then I get down here and a common phenomena and a formula for eyes is an artist, a wildlife artist named John Siri Lester. I used to study his eyes and he used to do eyes like this. Still does, I think he's still around. And you go in at the base and light will bounce up off of a shoulder, a cheek, etc. And it causes a halo, that secondary light source that happens down here. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to add a little bit of this around here to make it a smoother transition. Add a little bit of color in here to unite the, the color. Because again, I don't want it to be a different green altogether. I want it to be a little green from the bottom, green on the top, all over the place for Again, emphasis, balance, emphasis, rhythm, and unity, the four principles that have to be present. Balance, emphasis, rhythm, and unity. So the colorization right now, the way I'm going about it, is stressing the unity aspect of the elements. And so now I'm getting the white in here and I'm blending the colors that I laid in lightly. And I'm getting this kind of a dimensionality that's gonna happen. And I'm doing a gradient here, transitioning to the dark. Now I'm gonna get the black again, and I'm gonna go in here and... Remember, the bigger a pupil, the more amorous, the more attractive. Beady eyes are tiny pupils. Those are usually reserved in, in uh, narrative artwork for bad guys. Okay, now I'm gonna get the white here, and I'm gonna go in here. And I'm going to go around so it transitions out. Now that got a little bit dark. So what I can do in that instance is I can get one of these types of erasers that you can get that are retractable. You can use this. You can sometimes get some good results. What I like to use is a battery operated eraser. And I like to go in. To me, this is an essential tool when you're doing colored pencils. Because it lifts off pigment, but the pigment is such that it's not gonna lift off entirely, but it does help. Like right down here, I wanna have it be almost purely white. Get some dimensionality in there. Go back on the top here with some black. This is black. And then I'm gonna go and do the contour of the eye here. And I can get something that looks like a fish's eye, you know? It's kind of nice. Again, you can use these kind of retractable pencil erasers. They're erasers that have various tips and they're kind of nice. You know, you can get these and get them to go for you. Now, this is a blender. And this is something that you can use when it's not breaking on you. Give me a moment here. And of course, I got a sharpener without a pencil sharpener. Here we go. I'm going to sharpen this pencil, which is actually just some piece of, uh, I don't know what kind of a material it is, but it's imbibed with a, a solvent in it that gets, and I'm not pressing hard, it's just touching and it's dissolving the wax and therefore it's getting this to spread out like a watercolor pencil, behave like a watercolor pencil. So I can get this and blend. And like I said, I'm just barely touching it. And here I can go and do this and I can go and blend this. So. If you don't want the striations, 
of the line work, you can go in here and you can blend it. Softening the edge around the contour of the eye. And again, I suspect that that solvent is dissolving the wax. Okay, one more thing. This, you can use marker blenders to do the same thing more dramatically, or this is a secret, best team solvent. You can get this stuff, I believe you can still get this at Michael's, and I'm gonna use a Q-tip, just a little bit inside of the cap here, and watch what this does. It just bleeds. I'm gonna go get some more. Did I get any? And I'm gonna go in here and watch what happens. It just bleeds it. And so you get to smear this all around and it's really wonderful. And you can get these gorgeous results. Okay. Ah! Hello, how are you? I see you. All right, that's ridiculous, but it's fun. And the last thing you want to do cotton ball or tissue paper, preferably a clean tissue paper. And the wax on this is going to work its way to the surface in the next day or so. And it'll make this whole thing look white, dingy, okay? Because the wax takes on like a cloud, a foggy effect. And what you want to do is you want to polish this wax when you're done with it. You polish the surface of it. Can you see now? Let me see how this is shiny, but the bottom is not. So I'm buffing out the wax, which the wax, when that process happens, it's called a bloom. So I'm trying to stop the bloom from happening. I'm going to polish it. And now you'll see that the whole thing shines. It's beautiful. It's shiny. And once it shines, then I can go in here and I can do a spray fix on it. Um, but I prefer to use acrylic matte medium spray and it seems to retard the process. But this is going to be a shiny piece of artwork. And you can sell the original and it's beautiful. But if you want to reproduce it, it's a, a little bit more difficult because of the fact that it's got the shining quality to it. So at any rate, I hope that that helps you guys to understand a little bit about how to draw with Prismacolor pencils and uh, the materials that you're going to need to get it to the point where you're happy with it and that you benefit from this new medium. Okay, thank you.